Hello, Tibbs here. Uh, Tibbs Gaming. The hype train has arrived in the station, and we have Commander Legends. Um, so I'm going to do a box of collector boosters. I am super stoked. Um, been looking forward to this set. Um, yeah, collector's boxes are tons of fun, and this set is amazing. So let's get started. All right, I am going to take this a little slow, uh, since it's only 12 packs anyway. Might as well take a little bit of time on it. Um, Dispeller's Capsule. Got the commons here. Sky Diamond. Super happy to see the Diamond Cycle. I've always been on the fence about including them in Commander decks, and I, you know, if I can play with nice new shiny versions, I might have to include them in a few more. Um, Fleet Admiral here definitely have the pirate theme happening in this set uh, as well as the Monarch uh, Bowmaster there's again there's really some elf tribal to the set so nice common there uh, strategic planning is an okay common for a little card advantage uh, plays well in draft a braid that's a nice um extended art foil there that was a pretty um popular uncommon back in its standard run it's got a little utility i always like those uh, choice cards seem to have lost my focus there it is all right opal palace another extended art foil um nice utility commander land there Looking good in the foil. Um, Emoti, Celebrant of Bounty. Not super familiar with this particular uncommon, but it cascades and gives your more expensive spells cascades. So that's pretty cool for Cascade decks. Kodama the East Tree, the uh, new Kodama for this set. I think this make, gives us three of the four cardinal directions. Um, not a bad card. And we've got Sphinx of the Second Sun for a foil mythic right out of the gate. Um, eight drop for six six flying Sphinx. At the beginning of your post combat main phase, you get an additional beginning phase after this phase. That's kind of nice. Uh, let's see you up, untap at the end of your turn. Pure Dane, definitely not a bad um, foil art common there. Um, Dawnglade Regent um, for a full or extended art rare there. I don't know what I'm doing with these piles. I'm confusing myself. Um, rare Elk. 8 8 makes you the monarch, and as long as you have the monarch, permanent you control of Hexproof. Not bad for 7, for seven mana. Let me get into the etched foils, which are gorgeous um if you haven't seen these yet in person they are some beautiful beautiful cards um i don't know what i'm doing uh, so we've got tago goblin weaponsmith here for an uncommon um he's kind of cool makes rock uh, equipment uh, we've got maelstrom wanderer so mythic um Etched Mythic, that's pretty cool. Um, Christian Show of Haste, and it cascades twice. Definitely a popular commander. Um, again, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't really seem to show up as well on camera as these actually look in person. They're really nice looking cards. I'm really happy with the um, the etched foils, and I hope they continue to do them in the future. And we've got Kolfenor, the last U. Uh, so a um, etched foil rare there uh, from back in Lorwyn. I think I think this is a new card, but flavor-wise, it's from Lorwyn. 
Um, at vigilance reach. Whenever it or another creature until it dies, return up to one other type of creature with lesser toughness from your graveyard to your hand. So that's pretty cool. Um, kind of some neat art there. Nice card. And then, ah, I just love the foil tokens. Elf warrior on one side, angel. Good looking angel on the other side. All right, makeshift munitions. First common foil there. A cage of hands for common foil number two. Goblin trailblazer. Common foil number three. Soul's Might. Another foil common. Uh, Trove Tracker. Another pirate there. Confiscate. Uh, it's kind of a cool old reprint. Little, little spendy, but you know, can take any permanent, which is nice. I just love the old school art there. Um, the witches here. I am not even sure how to pronounce their name. Quambaj witches. Uh, very old card from way back in the day, with new art from Seb McKinnon, who's. Um, pretty quickly becoming one of the most popular modern magic artists, and I can usually see why. Um, so, cool card there. And we got El Haru, Solemn Ritualist. Uh, and just Battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on each of its two other target creatures. And then, whenever a non token creature control with a one one counter it dies, create a one one white spirit. So, that definitely could. Um, do some cool things in a token build. Uh, Helena Kessig Ranger. This guy, I saw, um, did a draft tonight, and someone ran this as a commander. And uh, actually, someone confiscated it from the player who played it and did a lot of. A lot of work with that ability. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, you may pay two. When you do, that creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature. Uh, very nice potential removal. All right, we've got a foil vault of champions. So this is the enemy version of the battle bond land cycle. Uh, enters and tapped unless you have two or more opponents. So that's pretty cool. Uh, definitely a Decent land cycle, so can't complain about a foil out of that. Um, Acidic Slime for an extended art uncommon. Uh, cool card. And Spatfield destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. So can't complain there. Um, Sats Will. I like the Will cards with the choose. If you have your commander, you can do both. Uh, each opponent sacrifices a creature, they control its greatest power, exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards, then create X01 throw creature tokens or X is the greatest power among creature cards exiled this way. Um, I run a Thrax Amendar commander deck. This will definitely be finding a home in that. Uh, Malcolm, Keen Eyed Navigator. Uncommon etched foil there um, on the pirate tribal theme. Silas Wren. For our mythic uh, etched for this pack. Um, whenever it deals combat damage to the player, choose target artifact card in your graveyard. You may cast that card this turn. That's pretty cool. It's got death touch. Um, oh, looks like we're sticking there. And then Nostro, uh, Voice of the Crags. I'm not familiar with this one. Uh, it's a 3 3 Chimera for 4. Uh, blue, red, white. Tap, choose one. X is the number of spells you cast this turn. Scry X deals X damage to target creature, or you gain X life. Um, that's kind of cool. I don't know if they've done a choose one on a creature activated ability before. I'm not sure. Um, they have a neat concept. We've got soldier on one side and a nice looking dragon on the other side. Maelstrom Colossus is an interesting 8-drop 
cascade for a 7 7 artifact creature golem. Definitely a very nice card in draft. Um, Elvis Doomsayer dies each opponent, discards a card. Fertilid is a nice uh, mana fixing option for draft, or if you're running a counter deck, a nice way to just pull lots and lots of basic lands out of your deck if you can find a way to add more counters. Uh, Spectral Searchlight with a reprint. Um, choose a player, and that player adds one mana of any color they choose. So typically you're going to choose yourself, but every now and then you might have a reason to hit someone else. Nice, gorgeous looking foil there. Uh, Wild Celebrants, just a 3 3 that enters the battlefield to destroy an artifact. Lightning Ring Crew, another pirate. Um, this one's kind of cool. Deals one damage, tap to deal one damage to each opponent. Whenever you cast a pirate, untap it. So you can get some value out of that if you're running Pirate Tribal. Three Visits, that's a um, pretty hot reprint. It was a Portal Second Age card, so it was pretty limited supply. Um, very nice ability, search your library for forest card, put it on the battlefield and shuffle. Uh, does not put it in tapped, so it's pretty good value at two mana. Uh, considering it replaces one, so it really only costs you one. And uh, it just says forest, it doesn't say basic forest, so you can find dual lands and the like. So definitely a very nice card at Uncommon. Radiant, Sarah Archangel. Um, yet another just good looking angel there's a lot of just great art in this set um radiance a um old school character that i always kind of liked um kind of has some flying tribal to have another untap creature control of flying against protection of the color your choice still on the turn so um six four flyer is pretty good and limited for sure Uh, Ghost of Ramirez D. Pietro, another pirate for that theme. And we've got Slash the Ranks for an extended art foil rare. Uh, destroy all creatures and planeswalkers except for commanders. So it's kind of cool. Um, pseudo board wipe. Uh, obviously, we could, you know, if you have a problematic commander across the board, it could be a problem, but. It could be great that it doesn't hit yours, depending on the situation. So, um, I'm really lost on what I'm doing with piles here. I should just give up. Um, Viscera Seer, the extended art common. Wheel of Misfortune, nice. Um, I really can't complain about that pull. Um, it's a sorcery. Nice card, uh, kind of the take on Wheel of Fortune, um, a little more, can cause some life, lo life loss and maybe not everybody necessary wheels, so interesting card for sure. Um, Abomination of Llanowar, I am an elf fan so I always like to get all the new elves. Um, I usually run them as mono green so it doesn't do me a lot of good, probably not something I'll play with, but it's pretty cool, creepy art. Um, and. I mean, obviously, Land of War is a big deal. Um, and it can be a really powerful card. Uh, power and toughness equals the number of elves you control plus the number of elf cards in your graveyard. And that's kind of Vigilance and Menace, so not a bad card by any means. Queen Marchesa. Um, definitely a nice mythic etched there. Um, Death Touch Haste makes you the monarch, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent is the monarch, you get a 1 1 black creature token with death touch and haste uh, three three for four mana very very nice card a uh, lot of value for four mana and then amareth the lustrous um, i believe this is a new card for the set it's a dragon uh, whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control look at the top card of your library if it shares a card type with that permanent you may reveal that card and put it in your hand um so definitely not a bad ability there. Could really chain into some nice turns if you get lucky. A foil Golem on one side and another Dragon. 
All right, got Sailor of Means there. That is a reprint, I am quite sure. Um, pretty decent pirate for the pirate tribal theme. Uh, Soul's Fire. Um, kind of odd to see this in red. It's been a green ability kind of lately. Um, entire creature can control deals damage equal to power to any target. Um, any target, though, I think green pretty much has to hit creatures, so I guess that could be kind of the difference. Palace Sentinels just enters to make the monarch. Just a little human soldier, nothing too exciting there. Uh, Spark Tongue Dragon. Definitely quite a few dragons in the set. Uh, Supernatural Stamina is a nice little common I like to run uh, in Limited. Nice with Enters the Battlefield abilities because it, um, if it, if you play this and then it dies, it, you return it to tab. So it doesn't just save it, it actually um, has it leave and come back, which is nice. Vow of Wildness, the Vows, I think they're all reprints of a cycle um, from a commander set in the past. Um, they make give buff a creature and make it so it can't attack you. So in a multiplayer game that can have some nice ramifications. Um, Volcanic Dragon. 4-4 four, four Flying Haste. Tuya Bear Claw. Uh, just a 2-2 two, two Human Warrior. Um, 3 mana. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus X plus X until end turn, where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. So, kind of cool and common. Dargo the Shipwrecker, or a uh, giant pirate. Uh, cost 7 mana for a 7 5 trample. As an additional cost, you may sacrifice any number of artifacts and/or creatures. Cost 2 less to cast for each permanent sacrifice this way, and 2 less to cast for each other artifact creature you sacrifice this turn. So you can get on that sacrifice theme. This guy can be pretty, pretty cheap for a 7 5 trampler. Foil Horizon Stone. Um, definitely an interesting card. A little uh, damage on the edge, chip on the edge there. Um, five mana for an artifact. If you would lose unspent mana, that mana becomes colorless instead. Um, definitely something that I think is going to find some uses out in the world. Thought Vessel. There's a nice um, extended art. You have no maximum hand size and taps for a colorless. Cool card, nice to get the extended version. Uh, extended version of Training Center. So again, that's the um, rare land cycle for the set. The enters tapped unless you have two or more opponents. Uh, first etched card, we've got Anara, Wolvid Familiar. Four mana for a 4-4 Wolf Beast. As long as it's your turn, commanders you control have indestructible. So that's pretty cool. Uh, nice uncommon there. Uh, Eureka, the Tiger Shadow, the uh, Ninja Commander. Nice mythic. And the uh, etched foil version there. And then Gore Muldrak, Amphenologist. Um, interesting interesting card with uh, protection from... Gives you and your permanent protection from salamanders, and at the beginning of your end step, each player who controls the fewest creatures creates a 4-3 blue salamander warrior creature token. So you can kind of give your opponents some creatures and encourage them to smack each other around a bit. Another golem with a throw. I haven't actually seen that out yet. That's pretty cool looking. A little creepy, crawly, crazy. Uh, Lifecrafter's Gift, uh, plus one plus one counter on target creature, then put another, uh, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter. So, uh, definitely can do some work in a counter themed deck. Uh, Marble Diamond, I think that's not like the second diamond of the whole box. That's kind of low. Uh, Prosperous Pirate makes a couple treasure tokens. Bitter Revelation. Um, Look at the top four, put two in your hand and the rest in your graveyard, you lose two life. Not bad for four mana in black. Uh, not great, but not bad. Uh, Seraph of Dawn, four mana for a two, four, five, and lifelink. Um, Guilt Leaf Winnower. Enter the battlefield, you may destroy a target non-elf whose power and toughness aren't equal. So, And it's a four, three menace for only five, so pretty value, pretty nice value card for uh, 
limited X for sure. So we can get some extra value with some elf tribal effects or whatnot. Angelic armaments, some equipment. Uh, cost three. Equipped creature gets plus two plus two. Has flying and a white angel in addition to its other colors and types. Equips for four. Could be pretty powerful. Uh, casket, the flesh, flesh sculptor. Human artificer, sack through artifacts and or creatures. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put two of them in your hand and the other into your graveyard. Uh, three mana, one three. Not, not bad. Not bad at all. Um, Quain, itinerant meddler. That's the uh, rabbit wizard for this set. Kind of a cool card. I like the art. Uh, only two mana for a 1-3. Uh, each player may draw a card, then each player who drew a card this way gains one life. Um, definitely fits nice in any kind of group hug strategy. Um, another Slash the Ranks. I believe we already had one of them, I think, with Extended Art or something. Uh, Path of Ancestry, another utility commander land. Um, nice, looking nice with the Extended Art there. Court of Cunning. Uh, all the courts, when they enter the battlefield, make you the monarch. This one costs three. And at the beginning of your upkeep, any number of target players each mail two cards. If you're the monarch, each of those players mails ten instead. Zur, the Enchanter. Uh, that would be a nice upgrade for a commander deck that I run. I um, I kind of prefer the art on the old one, but the etched foils just look so nice that I don't think I can pass up the upgrade. I guess he looks cool. I don't know. I just I really like the original art from Cold Snap. So that's our mythic there. Ooh, and I was hoping I would get one of these because I really like the flavor of good old Sanger, the Dark Baron. Um, I've just always been into Sanger. Um, I don't know why, because I usually hate vampires. I don't know. It's a weird thing. But I like... Sanger. Um, super strong. Whenever another creature dies, put two plus one plus one counters on it. You can just get nuts real fast. Um, if I don't do anything else with it, it'll obviously find a home in my Thrax Mundar commander deck that I think I already mentioned once this video. So it's definitely getting some upgrades. Um, whenever another player loses the game, you gain life. You go to that player's life total as the turn began. So yeah, just a uh, really nice card for six mana. We've got a spirit token with a copy token on the back. Brazen Freebooter, another pirate that uh, makes the treasure. Moss Diamond for another diamond there. Green one this time. Gift of Paradise for a little uh, enchant land. Gains you some life and makes you land tap for two of any color. Angelic Gift. Not bad. It draws your card and gives your creature flying. So, um, pretty solid for an aura unlimited. Uh, workshop assistant, common artifact construct, one two for three mana. When it dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So, not bad at all. Um, if you get some good artifacts, can do a lot of do a lot for you. Volcanic Torrent is kind of an interesting card for generic and red for a sorcery. Uh, it has Cascade and then deals X damage to each creature and Planeswalker your opponent's control where X is the number of spells you've cast this turn. So in theory it's always going to be at least two because you cast this and then whatever you Cascade into will resolve before this. So I guess it's always at least two so that's not bad. Um, definitely going to be better if you can up that count a bit. Uh, oil extended our myriad landscape there. Not a bad card at all. Uh, pay two tap at sack. It's a search your library for two basic land cards that share a type. Put them on the battlefield tapped. Um, it does enter tapped, but nice way to thin out your deck and get some basics in play. You can find you a color that you're missing. Breaches, Brazen Plunderer. Um, another pirate there. Uh, this one lets you. Whenever one or more pirates control deal damage to your opponents, 
Exile the top card of each of those opponent's libraries. You may play those cards this turn, and you may spend mana so, or mana of any color to cast those spells. Uh, doesn't even specify a combat damage, so that's nice. That could definitely uh, be a good card in a pirate deck, for sure. Uh, Rayav, Master Smith, 2 for a 2-2, two, two. Dwarf Artificer. Whenever a creature you control that's enchanted or equipped attacks, it gains double strike to end of turn. So that's pretty nice value for 2 mana. Coercive Recruiter, that's 5 for a 4-3. Uh, whenever it or another pirate on spell field learning control gain control of target creature until end of turn, untap that creature until end of turn it gains haste and becomes a pirate in addition to its other types. So um I don't know, not not the I don't know. Seems kinda underwhelming to me, but maybe I'm not thinking it through all the way. Uh extended art on the witches there. Looking good. Uh, extended our Horizon Stone. A little duplication action happening, but uh, still not a bad card to double up on. Uh, Sieni, Eye of the Storm. Uh, Jin Monk, 4 mana for a 3 2 flyer. Every attack, Scry X, where X is the number of attacking creatures with flying, so that could get pretty nuts if you run a flying themed deck. Uh, Marath, Will of the Wild. Uh, I'm not familiar with this one. Red, green, white for an elemental beast. Enters the battlefield with a number of plus one, plus one counters on it equal to the amount of mana spent to cast it. Uh, you can pay X and remove X counters. Choose one. X can't be zero. Put X plus one, plus one counters on target creature. Uh, Marath deals X damage to any target. Or create an XX green elemental creature token. So an interesting token commander there. Um, mythic and we've got the Zara, Renegade Recruiter, another pirate. Uh, whenever it attacks, look at defending player's hand. You may put a creature card from it on the battlefield under control, tapped and attacking that player or a planeswalker they control. Turn that creature to its owner's hand, begin the next end step. That's pretty cool. Um, wow, I just really like that. It's kind of a neat. Uh, I think that's a fairly unique ability. I don't think they've done anything quite like that that I can think of. Um, I've got Horror Token there with the angel on the back. Oh, I like that you can see the hex sky in the background. So this must be on Mirrodin. All right, so that's halfway. Pilgrim's Eye, nice. Um, colorless search for a basic, uh, so good fixing for uh, limited for sure. Um, I'm sure it's quite good enough for constructed commander play, but Omen Speaker, kind of same deal. Pretty good for limited, but Commander Sphere is something that uh, is definitely playable in constructed in certain decks. Three mana, taps for mana of any color in your identity. And then you can sack it to draw a card if you need to. So, got some flexibility. Dragon Mantle um, seems to be a cycle of auras that uh, draw you a card when they enter. Rupture Spire, not my favorite land, but it does tap for any color. So, it's a um, nice value option for decks with multiple colors that need it. Guildless Commons. Uh, it's battlefield tapped and you return land control to its owner's hand. Um, so kind of reminiscent of the uh, original uh, guild lands from, I believe, the first Ravnica block that uh, entered and tapped for one of each color in the guilds. This is kind of the colorless version of those. Dreamstone Hedron, another uh, artifact that taps for colorless mana. Definitely a strong amount of colorless support in this set. Pretty cool. Uh, Prava of the Steel Legion. Uh, three mana for a 1-4. As long as it's your turn, creature tokens you control get plus 1, plus 4, which is nuts. Um, making 1-1s one into 2-5s is, is crazy. Um, only during your own turn, so um, kind of weird that their toughness goes up so much on your turn when it could be really handy for blocking, but it lets you make some swings that you might not otherwise be able to make. 
um, Averna, the Chaos Bloom. Uh, as you cascade, you will put a land card from among the exiled cards onto the battlefield tapped. Definitely a strong contender for any deck with a heavy amount of cascade. Uh, Plague Reaver. Extended art foil there. Three mana for a 6 5. Begin your end step, sacrifice each other creature you control. Um, discard two cards, sack Plague Reaver, choose target opponent, return Plague Reaver to the battlefield under the, that player's control to begin the next end keep, upkeep. Yeah, struggling with some words there. Um, yeah, that's kind of a cool card. I, it's interesting. Not sure what I would do with it. But might be something I have to look at. Ooh, the extended art swords, the plowshares. Very nice looking there. Um, really like the uh, nice clean text box. It's a good look. Phyrexian Triniform. Mythic extended art. Um, nine mana, nine, nine. Uh, when it dies, create three. Three, three, um, call this golem tokens. It's got encore of 12, so if you're playing against a substantial number of opponents, that encore can get real nuts. Because uh, then when they all die, you get all the three threes, which will stick around. Definitely, definitely a fun card that I'm definitely going to have to try out in a call this commander deck that I'm intending to build. Uh, Arami of the Dead Tide, Merfolk Wizard, 3 mana for a 1 4. Exile cards from your, from your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have. Target creature card in your graveyard gains Encore until end of turn. Encore cost equals its mana cost. So that's pretty cool. You can uh, get back. Um, if you build around it, there's definitely some stuff worth giving Encore to out there in the world. Carador, Ghost Chieftain, or the etched mythic here. Uh, eight mana in white, black, green for a centaur spirit. Costs one less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. During each of your turns, you may cast a creature spell from your graveyard. So definitely a cool card. Um, and again, these etched foils just look so nice. And then Bell Borka, uh, Spectral Sergeant. Definitely a strange card. Uh, two generic red and white for a um, star five spirit soldier. Uh, note the converted mana cost of each card as it's put into exile. Uh, Bell Borka, Spectral Sergeant's power, is equal to the greatest number noted for it this turn. In your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Um, yeah, just weird, weird wording. But could definitely I mean it's basically you know gets you some card advantage which in red white is always necessary uh, I've got a soldier thrall elvish visionary nice little two drop draw you a card for on a one one body uh, exquisite hunt master uh, Four for a four two dies make a token that's got encore, so then it comes back and makes you some more tokens. Flood of Recollection, two blue for a sorcery return target, instant or sorcery card from graveyard to hand, then exile Flood of Recollection. So, um, this is a really solid common, I think. Um, I'm not sure if it's a reprint. Uh, Captain's Call is. Uh, makes you three soldier tokens for four mana. Ah, uh, the Foil Prismatic Piper. Um, I don't know, it seems kind of pointless to me to be in foil since it mostly exists just for uh, draft purposes and who would be drafting with collector boosters, but there it is anyway. Um, definitely an interesting art, not my favorite of Seb's, but um, it's unique, not... Um, stands out a bit compared to some other art, so that's cool. Uh, Merchant Raiders, Pirate, uh, whenever it or another pirate enters the battlefield under control, tap up to one target creature, doesn't untap during its controllers and taps up for as long as you control Merchant Raiders. Wow, that could actually um, 
do some work in the pirate deck because you could tap down a bunch of stuff and it all doesn't tap as long as this guy stays out that's cool um, ordeal of Nylea reprint from the original Theros block Whatever attacks, put a puzzle on corner. Then when you have three, you sack this, and you can search your library for up to two basic lands, put them in tapped. Um, uh, pirate here. Whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents, you create a treasure token for each opponent dealt damage. So, um, for a three, for a two, three mana for two, two flyers, definitely not bad at all. Uh, we already had an Anara. Ooh! That's a nice pull right there. Um, the uh, Foil Extended Art Opposition Agent. This card's getting a little, there's a lot of talk about this card. Uh, it's holding pretty good value for a rare. Two generic and a black for a 3 2 human rogue. Uh, got Flash. You control your opponents while they're searching their libraries. And then while an opponent is searching their library, they exile each card they find. You may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast them. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a very nice pull right there. Coiling Oracle, kind of an interesting common, get the extended art there. Extended art Vault of Champions. Uh, Miara, Thorn of the Glade. Um, two mana for a 1-2. Whenever it or another alpha control dies, you may pay one uh, generic at one life if you do draw a card. Um, very solid card. Definitely makes me uh, wish I ran black in my elf decks, but we will see if I have to reevaluate my mono green choices uh, and then brago king eternal um in the etched foil the mythic rare uh another one that i i already run so this will be a nice upgrade for that deck very nice looking etched foil in there oh and i've got foil jessica thrice reborn um so it seems to be um, this is the only thing I seem to be seeing. See, it seems like it's either three, three, three etched foils or two and a um, borderless planeswalker. Could be wrong. There might be something else that can take that slot, but uh, that's what I seem to be seeing. Two generic and a red for a legendary planeswalker, Jessica. Enters the battlefield with a loyalty counter on it for each time you've cast a commander from the command zone this turn. Uh, zero, choose target creature until your next turn. If that creature would deal combat damage to one of your opponents, it deals triple that damage to that player instead. And then minus X to deal X damage to each of up to three targets. Can be your commander and has partner. So um, I feel like that's kind of a solid card. Definitely um, something that if someone, someone out there might find a way to do something with it, I think. Uh, we got a soldier copy there. Foil Opal Palace. Uh, foil Foundry Inspector. Uh, three for a three two that makes your artifact spells cost one less to cast. Not bad at all. Uh, Impulsive Pilfer. One red for a one one that makes a treasure token when it dies, and then you can encore it for four. Gale Strike, uh, three mana, instant speed, return target tab creature to its owner's hand, draw a card. Uh, definitely a nice way to remove an attacker and replace the card. So very solid and limited, for sure. Uh, Scrap Diver Serpent, can't be blocked as long as defending player controls an artifact. Uh, who doesn't have an artifact in Commander? So. This is seven mana for a 5-5, five, five, though, and no other abilities. So. Makes sense that it's only a common. Uh, Vow of Torment. This one gives plus two, plus two, and menace, and then can't attack you or Planeswalker you control. Uh, extended Art Arcane Denial. Um, oh, and Foil. Extended Art Foil. 
I've never been a fan of Arcane Denial. Um, I mean, it gets you one card, but it gives your opponent two unless you do weird things and counter your own spell or shenanigans. Um, Elena, Kessig Trapper. Five mana for a four three first strike. Tap to add an amount of red equal to the greatest power among creatures you control that entered the battlefield this turn. Um, so I guess it kind of makes one of your creatures essentially free for the turn. Uh, Hamza, Guardian of Irration. Six mana for a five five elephant warrior. Costs one less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Wow, that's that's nuts. That could get that could get a little crazy. Uh, Foil Mythic here, Port Razor. Um, five mana for a four four orc pirate. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, untap each creature you control. After this combat phase, there is an additional combat phase. Uh, Port Razor can't attack a player that has already attacked this turn. Um, your other creatures can, so this can actually get you one combat for each opponent plus one more. So, can definitely get some value out of that guy if you can get him through uh, having survived combat repeatedly. Oh, has to get through, yeah, has to deal combat damage. Uh, extended Art, Myriad Landscape, uh, Armored Sky Hunter for a Extended Art Rare there, 4 mana for a 3-3 three, three Cat Knight with flying. Uh, whenever it attacks, look at the top 6 cards of your library. You may put an aura or equipment card from among them onto the battlefield. If an equipment is put onto the battlefield this way, you may attach it to a creature you control. Put the rest of those cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. Um, definitely a solid card for a um, aura and equipment build. Numa, Draga Chieftain, 3 mana for a 2-2 two, two, uh, Legendary Elf Warrior. The beginning of the combat on your turn, you may pay X, 2x, x twice, I don't know, whatever. When you do, distribute x plus one plus one counters among any number of target elves. Um, this guy will probably definitely make a way into its way into some elf deck of mine. Uh, Najila, the Blade Blossom. Uh, reprint there. I didn't get a copy in the set it first came out in, so that's pretty cool for a five color deck. Uh, two dragon and red for a 3 2 hum legendary human warrior. Uh, whenever a warrior attacks, you may have its controller create a 1 1 white warrior creature token that's tapped and attacking. And you can pay one of each color to untap all attacking creatures. They gain trample, lifelink, and haste until end of turn. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. Activate this ability only during combat. Um, very powerful card. Um, very crazy ability if you have the five color. It's definitely a solid thing. Uh, then we've got Lisa, Shroud, Laisa? I don't know, I don't know how you want to say that. Shroud of Dusk. Um, two, genetic, two white and a black for a 5 5 flying lifelink, uh, legendary angel. Rather than pay two for each previous time you've cast a spell from the command zone's game, pay two life that many times. Uh, now whenever a player casts a spell, they lose two life. So hopefully that 5-5 five, five life link can get you back enough life to make up for the costs. Horror and Foil Monarch token. All right, getting into the last three packs here. Staunch Throne Guard. Uh, just a 5 mana, 2 5 vigilance that makes you the monarch. Core Cartographer, 3 generic and a white for a 2 2 that when it the battlefield, you can search for it planes and put it on the battlefield tap. So, um, definitely not an ability white gets a ton of. So, it's a good card for that reason. Uh, Mallfield Twins, 5 generic and a black for a 4 4 that when it dies, uh, makes 2 2 2 tokens. Could be good for your zombie decks. Armory of IROS. Uh, two generic for an equipment that equips for two, and then whenever equipped creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Very solid for a common equipment. Uh, Silverback Shaman, five mana for a five four trample, dies, draw a card. Nothing too exciting there. Uh, the old Meteor Golem, seven mana for a three three artifact creature golem that enters the battlefield, destroy target non land permanent opponent controls. Um, solid color in this removal, but at a high mana cost. 
monstrous onslaught. Three generic two green for a sorcery deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. Where X is the greatest power among creatures as you control as you cast this spell. Okay. Now we've got Essior, Wardwing Familiar, Legendary Bird. Uh, one generic and a blue for a 1 3. It's fine, and spells your opponents cast that target one or more commanders you control cost three more to cast. That's pretty cool. Um, Armix, Filigree Thrasher. Two generic and a black for a 3 2 legendary artifact creature golem. Uh, whenever it attacks, you may discard a card. When you do, target creature defending player controls gets minus X minus X until end of turn. Where X is the number of artifacts you control plus the number of artifact cards in your graveyard. So that could get a little nuts. I could see that being a pretty big uh, pretty big X. Nice removal option. Uh, Chroma's Will for another the will cycle here. Three Jank and a white for an instant. Choose one if you control a commander. You may choose both. Creatures you control gain fly and vigilance and double strike until end of turn. And or creatures you control gain lifelink, indestructible, and protection from all colors until end of turn. So very solid card, especially if you have both commanders. That's gets a little nuts at that point. Uh, another extended art arcane denial. Uh -oh. Extended art bio waste blob or ooze tribal. Two generic and two green for an ooze. Uh, it's a zero zero, but oozes you control get plus one plus one, so it keeps itself alive that way. Three in your upkeep. If you control a commander, create a token that's a copy of Bio Waste Blob. So could get a little nuts uh, given a little time. Nadier. Um, sure. Agent of the Duskinel. Five generic and a black for a 3 3 legendary elf warrior. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on this. When it leaves the battlefield, create a number of 1 1 green elf creature tokens equal to its power. So definitely could be solid in a token type elf build. Uh, Ludovic, Necro Alchemist. For the, um, etched Mythic here. 3 mana for a 1-4 Legendary Human Wizard. At the beginning of each player's end step, that player may draw a card if a player other than you lost life this turn. That's kind of cool. Your opponents can draw cards if they do damage to someone else. And then an etched um, Averna. I think one of these, I can't remember if the other one was etched or not. Uh, but again, cool card for Cascade decks for sure. Uh, just a Soldier Monarch there. Piles of foils get a little slippery. Eye Blight Colors, 5 mana for 3-3, three, three, then when it dies makes 3-1-1. One, one. Green Elf Warriors then mills you for 3. Lointer of Valor. Uh, 5 generic and a white for a 3-5 flyer. Whenever a creature attacks, you may pay 3. When you do, put a puzzle puzzle counter on that creature. Interesting that it doesn't specify yours. If you really wanted to sink some mana into someone else's turn, you could do it. Um, Aqueous Form is a pretty good aura, actually. For one blue, enchanted creature can't be blocked, and whenever it attacks, scry one. So not bad. Uh, Rip Scale Predator is just a six mana, six five menace in red. Uh, Valakot Invoker is a interesting mana sink late game in limited. 3 mana for a 2-3 that you can pay 8 to deal 3 damage to any target. Uh, Demonic Lore. Um, very intrigued by this card. Can't decide if I want to run it in anything yet. 2 generic to black for an enchantment. Enters the battlefield, draw 3 cards. Beginning of your end step, you lose 2 life for each card in your hand. So, um, you could definitely do a lot, or you could lose a lot of life to this if you play it early and uh, return to Dust, uh, 2 generic and 2 white for an instant, exile target artifact or enchantment. If you cast this during your main phase, you may exile to one other target artifact or enchantment. It's definitely a nice foil extended art there. Uh, Arami of the Dead Tide, we already had one of them. Levio, Oathsworn Sentinel. 
generic and white for a 2-2 human knight, legendary. I'll pay one generic and white to choose another target creature. Its controller may exile with an Aegis counter on it. Uh, pay two and a white tap. Return all exiled cards with Aegis counters on them to the battlefield under their owner's control. Huh. It's kind of odd, I guess. I don't know. Not sure how I feel about that. Definitely a weird card. Uh, foil extended out Wheel of Misfortune. That's pretty cool. Um, extended Art Burnished Heart. Uncommon there. Jessica's Will. For the red entry in the Will cycle. Two Jack and a Red for a Sorcery. Choose one or both if you have a commander. Uh, add red for each card and target opponent's hand. Or exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn. Um, feels like a solid spell for red. Captain Vargas Wrath. Um, for the first of our etched cards in this pack. Blue and red for a 1-1 one, one legendary orc pirate. Whenever it attacks, pirates you control get plus one plus one until end of turn for each time you've cast a commander from the command zone this turn. Um, uh, kind of wish he had partner, but um, still a solid card. Then we've got Karametra, God of Harvests. Uh, three genetic green white for a 6 7 legendary enchantment creature god. Indestructible. As long as your devotion to green and white is less than 7, it isn't a creature. Whenever you cast a creature, you may search your library for a forest or plains, put it on the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Um, very cool card. Uh, the gods are always fun from Theros. And then we've got the Veneral Urborg Tyrant. Um, kind of a callback to Nivineral's disc from way back when. Virginica White, Blue and a Black for a 3-6 Legendary Zombie Wizard. Has Hexproof from Artifacts, Creatures, and Enchantments. When it enters the battlefield, create a tapped 2-2 Black Zombie Creature token for each creature that died this turn. And when it dies, you can pay one. When you do, destroy all Artifacts, Creatures, and Enchantments. So basically, when he dies, you can... Uh, same as activating the disc. So that's kind of cool. And then we've got a Foil Treasure with a Angel on the back. Kinsbale Courier. Um, seems like a Lorwyn card. I'm not 100% sure. Well, it can't be a reprint because Encore is new, I believe. Yes, Encore is new. So, but definitely seems to play into the Lorwyn flavor there. Uh, Natural Reclamation. Five mana, Cascade, Destroy Target Artifact or Enchantment. Uh, not bad. Instant Speed is always nice. Run away together. Um, I think that was just in Throne of Eldraine, so pretty recent reprint. Oh. Haunted Cloak. This seems seems like a pretty solid equipment to me, especially for a common. Three generic for equipment. Equipped creature has Vigilance, Trample, and Haste, and it equips for one mana. So definitely kind of a fan of that. Um, obviously it doesn't give Shroud or Hexproof like the Lightning Greaves or swift foot boots but still seems pretty good uh foil viscera seer there foil burning anger uncommon oh wow i guess it's a little spendy i read the ability first and i was like that's good and then i saw five mana and i'm like all right uh tap enchanted creature has tap this creature deals damage equal to its power to any target so um get that on the right creature it could definitely be good times Maybe throw it on a Death Toucher or something. Mindless Automaton. Four for a Construct. Enters with two Puzzle Puzzle Counters. Pay one discard card to put another counter on it. Remove two counters to draw a card. Um, if you can, like, if that was out with, like, Doubling Season or something, it could get interesting. Slurk. All in Jesting. Another Ooze here. Five generic and a green. Uh, enters the battlefield with five Puzzle Puzzle Counters on it. Whenever it or another creature you control dies, if it had a plus one plus one counter on it, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control that has a plus one plus one counter on it. Um, it doesn't specify non-token either, so 
it's definitely a pretty pretty cool card especially at uncommon uh Kedis, ember claw familiar one generic and a red for a one one elemental lizard legendary whenever a commander you control deals combat damage to your opponent it deals that much damage to each other opponent so that's pretty cool uh, especially for only two mana definitely not not bad at all necrotic hex uh six generic and a black for a sorcery each player sacrifices six creatures you create six tapped two two black zombie creature tokens um if this was worded the other way around it would be nuts so you could sack the tokens you create i understand why it's not but um i'm not sure how to feel about it this way i guess if you're in a token heavy deck you might have the six creatures you want to sack but it doesn't really fit in any of my decks so it's just hard to be excited about it right off the bat uh nice extended art command tower can't complain about that Ooh, commander's plate very nice um one mana for an equipment equipped creature gets plus three plus three and has protection from each color that's not in your commander's color identity uh equips to your commander for three otherwise equips for five to any other creature um definitely a very interesting mythic um pretty nuts in colorless or monocolor decks um kind of diminishing returns as you add colors but definitely a solid card there it is the etched foil version of prismatic piper i guess i brought this on myself when i called out the regular foil of prismatic piper for seeming kind of pointless so they just had to one-up me and give me the etched foil prismatic piper is this the only common etched i feel like everything else has been at least an uncommon um just a weird decision if you ask me but what do i know uh ishai ujitai dragon speaker two generic white and blue for a legendary bird monk with flying it's one one whenever an opponent casts a spell put a plus and plus counter on it and it has partner um, i don't know it seems good not much to say about it though it just kind of does what it does and oh stuck together here last card crark the thumbless uh kind of a cool card ties into his thumb and other thumb from i think his other thumb was an unset but but um one generic red for a 2-2 legendary goblin wizard whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell flip a coin if you lose the flip return that spell to its owner's hand if you win the flip copy that spell you may choose new targets for the copy uh, and it has partner so that'll do it uh for this box treasure and monarch um i don't know uh i don't think I don't really know it's the first one of these i've done not sure how i feel about how i did value wise um obviously didn't hit any of the big three being jeweled lotus um vampiric tutor and mana drain um did hit some solid rares with things like the opposition agent with the extended foil so um probably not bad i just don't really know enough about the set yet and where values are to know how it's going to hold up or uh i don't know but um i definitely like the etched foils they're really nice looking uh glad i picked up a couple to replace into my commander decks that i already have um but yeah it's a it's a solid product i feel and uh i don't know uh anyway um that's gonna wrap up this video which got a little longer than i thought it would for only opening 12 packs apparently i was a little rambly um but thanks for watching uh, i don't know if i don't know how many people made it this far but uh we will see you next time and uh you know like the video leave me a comment um and subscribe to the channel also this is the first video i'm recording since i launched my uh, a patreon account um i'm gonna do another video where i 
explain the tiers that I have set up. Um, I'll probably end up posting that video before I post this video, so you may have already seen it, but um, definitely wanted to just throw that out there that I do have a Patreon site now, and I will be... Um, what I want to do is the tiers. I'm giving out packs from openings um, to the tiers. Um, so go check it out. I'll try to remember to throw a link in the description of this video. Um, would definitely appreciate the support if you are willing and can afford to do it. Um, obviously, it's as of the filming of this video, it's 2020. I assume I'll still get it up this year. It's only uh, November, so I should have time. But uh, yeah, um, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm out.